Hi, welcome. This is the first uh, video blog of the uh, UTD China cave diving expedition. Um, we'll be uh, shooting as much daily video blogs as, uh, as we can and uploading them on their, our YouTube channel Nowdive TV. That's on youtube.com slash nowdive. You will see these videos pop up as much as we can during the week. Um, right now we're still in Denmark and I am participating in an overhead protocols class that's run right now. Um, you're, never, you're never too good to learn, so I joined in uh, with Kesper Dry, our cave instructor from Denmark, who's over there setting up uh, a dry run, even though it's raining like nothing else. So it's a wet dry run, but as you can see, there's lines going crisscross everywhere. The participants preparing their equipment and today we're going to be doing um, also some underwater training with regards to the line protocols and all that sort of stuff so for me it's a good opportunity to come back in the game of cave diving again come back and honing honing the skills and um, today we'll be doing a lot of lost line procedures and no vis procedures so it's going to be uh, quite a good day. Stay tuned on our YouTube channel and you will follow more on the daily progress of our um, program uh, and expedition there. It'll be my personal um, uh, how you say, record of experiences during the trip there, during the dives and on the way back. And just regarding the whole being in China and diving in a in a destination that's not very normal and not very um, how you say um, not very mainstream travel destination. So stay tuned. ready for packing. So let's see what kind of gear uh, we'll be bringing, bringing with us to China. Uh, let's look at the personal gear then while we're there I'll do a little blog on what kind of expedition gear we'll be using during the cave dives. Um, so let's have a look at the, um, at the suit first of all. Let's see if I can show you the suit. Turn the camera around. Even though the water temperature will be around 23, 26 degrees, we will still be using primarily our dry suits. Um, it's more comfortable to stay dry if you're diving very, very long dives, personal opinion. Uh, also, the dry suit has two large pockets on the thighs, uh, a right and a left pocket with uh, different compartments. Um, so let's look at these pockets. On the right side, I have a pocket with a flap on top with a little pocket inside the flap that's closed with a zipper. Um, this we use primarily for attaching extra double enders. Uh, in open water diving on wrecks and, and technical diving, I'll also carry a, um, a, a John line in there for attaching to the upline when we're doing our deco. Now we'll just be filled with uh, double enders. Inside there is a couple of bungees for the primary gear. A right pocket generally is used for the, the working pocket, that's the pocket we'll be using uh, all the time. Uh, on the inside, closest to the thigh, is a tight little little pocket for the wet note, which we'll be using constantly to make notes. And then we'll have two of these bungees for other gear. On the left side, it's a more simple pocket. Big room with two large bungees inside. And our left pocket is primarily used for our backup gear. So our backup equipment is on our left. Let's look at the contents of these pockets. In my, in my right pocket, I will be carrying a wet notes so we can make notes of, of the cave and communicate more complicated communications between divers. I'll be carrying a bunch of these double enders. They're just nice to have, you never know when you need them. When you drop one in the silt or something, you have another spare one. We'll have a pigtail, uh, like we call this, which is like a bungee with different line markers. Uh, we use when marking up a line in the cave. Then we have two spools for, for jumps and other line work. Then let's look at the left content pocket. I have a safety spool, which is different than the others. It's only used in case of lost line or lost body or stuff. Uh, a pair of scissors, 
which are titanium coated with a stainless steel bolt in the middle. You can get these with a normal steel bolt and they'll always rust and break when you most need them. A leash for stage bottles and a backup mask. And it's all attached with double enders to or single enders to um, the lines in the pockets. Then when we look at lights, we'll be uh, obviously carrying backup lights, two backup lights, one on the right side of the harness here you can see and one on the left side underneath the bungee nice and clean tucked away and a primarily light this is a, a strong um, yeah well in old school 50 watt uh, LED with a uh, canister uh, battery and an EO cord uh, it'll provide me with about six hours of burn time which is which is good uh, then we'll have a compass and a bottom timer, obviously primarily mask, a primary mask and a couple of fins, stiff jet, a jet fin from Scuba Pro, and I'll have a GoPro with me to take some nice shots of the beautiful cave. Let's uh, look at the system we'll be using on our backs. It's not going to be back mounted diving, it's going to be side mounted diving uh, because of availability of the tanks. Uh, we could only get our hands on uh, aluminium 80s and for sideman diving those are perfect we'll be using obviously the utd z system for those of you those of you who don't know that system it is a dir compatible side mount system meaning as you can see the manifold on the back here is isolatable so we can still like a pair of doubles isolate left from right all the hoses we use are attached to the system and not to the individual tanks so we don't have to switch regulators there's two feed hoses here and here that that'll feed the system via QC6. This is the coupling we'll use. And this first stage will just be attached to our tanks. And then as soon as we plug this in, then the system is ready to go. Um, the main advantage of that is that you don't have to hassle with all the hoses and put them in its place. Everything is in its place. Plus, you don't have to switch between regulators. We'll just be using a normal necklace regulator for ourselves and a long hose donatable necklace uh, long hose donatable um, hose for our primary regulator so everything is nice and simple there's places here to put some weights with the thin undergarments I'll be wearing uh, zero tam fourth element zero tam uh, undergarments I'll in fresh water I'll need about two kilos of weight so they'll just go in there the wing will carry nine kilos. It's a nine kilo uh, lift wing. And since the wing only carries the weight of the tanks, I'll be able to carry up to four uh, bottles at one time uh, filled with air. Since the air, the weight of the gas in, a, in, a, in an LE 80 is about two, 2.2 kilos. So that was a little bit about the gear we'll be using. If you have any questions, please uh, comment uh, on this uh, YouTube link below um, or write us an email. But uh, the YouTube link, that way anyone, everyone can see your mail and the response you get. So um, stay tuned for more videos.